Are there more React meta frameworks coming? Gah, I hope not. Let's talk about that and other predictions for the web in 2024. So I think this is gonna be a super fun conversation about what the rest of the year has to offer us and the web development ecosystem. So Wes Boss put this tweet up and he was asking just in general, what are your predictions for 2024? What's gonna to happen to JS, I almost said JSS, JS, CSS, servers, framework, standards, beyond, et cetera. So I thought this would be a fun time to just walk through some of the comments, talk about them, and then also get your feedback. So as we go through some of these predictions, let me know in the comments what you think. Do you agree or do you disagree? And if you have any that you want to add, share those below as well. So here's the fun one to start off with from Shane. This is node native TypeScript support and a Rust web framework is going to take off. Rust is interesting. I've never used Rust. I've heard really good things. It and Go are like two of the more exciting up and coming languages. Wouldn't be surprised if there's a web framework, but the TypeScript and Node is really interesting. So we have things like Dino and Bun, which have automatic TypeScript support. I did a video on Bun recently about why I think it's really awesome, why I think it's something that I will use in the future. And I think that the biggest reason is native TypeScript support. Setting up TypeScript in a regular Node.js project is a mess, quite honestly. So that's really cool. Now, I mentioned this one at the top of the video. I think we're due for a new React meta framework. What a ridiculous yet probably true thing to say. We have so many React meta frameworks. We have Next.js, we have Remix, we have Redwood.js, we have, I don't even know what else, but adding a new one to this is probably not that far-fetched because it seems like every day there's a new meta framework. So I wouldn't be surprised at all if this comes true. Now we have one about uh, LLMs, lear language learning models in the browser, which would be really interesting. Anything around AI is most likely going to take off or continue to take off in 2024. AI and ChatGPT exploded last year in 23. It's a very fun topic, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, more of that in the future. Uh, JS prediction around dates is will be the year tem temporal replaces date. I don't actually know what temporal is. Let's actually look that up. JavaScript temporal. Is this a package or... This is a proposal for dates. Interesting. Temporal, a global object that acts as a top level namespace like math or something like that, that has, I assume, like just better functions for working with dates. That would be really interesting. That would get rid of the need for something like moment.js or I forget date functions or whatever it is. That would be really cool. And uh, it would remove a lot of additional packages from a lot of different uh, projects. <laughs> Uh, we've got some aggressive comments from Ken Wheeler. Not surprised at all. I won't read it out loud. You can read the comment there. Um, Expo to become a great web framework. I don't know. So Expo, I think, is a tool for working with React Native. I don't know much about Expo. I've always heard negative things about it. So we'll kind of see if that comes uh, true. Now, the next one is really cool. The rise of universal React server components. I don't know what universal means. But React Server Components, I think, is going to grow and grow. Next.js is already doing React Server Components. I know that Remix and Redwood, both of those frameworks, are working on incorporating and making React Server Components uh, built in. So I uh, wouldn't be surprised uh, to see that happen as well. Jay Larkey mentioned Astro, my favorite framework, which you can use React with. Uh, mentioned Solid and RSCs continue to grow. Again, RSCs, React Server Components, absolutely. PWAs from Kelvin uh, will be on the rise and barrier to entry to use it will be super low and I'm here to see it. This is interesting. I feel like I haven't really heard anything about PWAs, at least the hype around PWAs that we did several years ago. So I don't really know. I'd be curious to see that, uh, but it's not really something that's been top of mind for me. So Ryan Florence, who is one of, I don't know, the founders or creators of Remix, says lots of aha moments with RSC, uh, lots of code will move to the server. This is something Remix has already been doing. This is something they're integrating uh, React Server components into their uh, framework. So not surprised at all to see him say this. Yeah, interesting. Uh, subgrid in all browsers, I can pray. I've never uh, done anything with subgrid. I think this is gaining adoption. Let's look up CSS scub grid. And if we look down, at the bottom of this doc, I think we'll have, yes, yeah, so this looks like it's in most browsers already. So maybe this has already come true. I don't know. Uh, framework library built around progressive enhancement. Progressive enhancement is, I believe, like 
take it, making sure everything works without JavaScript when JavaScript is disabled, but then also taking advantage of JavaScript when it is enabled. So uh, most developers will be using Voler, but not realize it. Don't know what that is. Uh, Expo again, Bun again will go mainstream. Love that one. Killer RSC first libraries. Again, RSC is the theme here. Pay attention to React server components. PHP makes a comeback and JavaScript disappears into obscurity. There's so many jokes and things about JavaScript now becoming what PHP has been for a long time. I will say people that love PHP, love PHP. They absolutely love PHP. So this is interesting. Um, PHP will make a comeback. I feel like it's still really strong. Instead of eating out other JS frameworks, weird phrasing, RSCs will instead take a bite off Ruby and PHP audience. So like more people will kind of migrate over. Maybe, I don't know. Uh, for loops make a big comeback, map and reduce, deleted from the language. I doubt that. That obviously won't happen. Let's scroll down and find some more. Return of stateful servers over stateless servers. So stateless servers is basically getting into the idea of like serverless functions, basically. And serverless functions, they kind of spin up and they spin down and they don't maintain any ongoing state. So the return of stateful servers, that would be really interesting. If something like bun became really popular, um, or grew as one of the predictions said that could be a way that we have more of a stateful full JavaScript backend server. So maybe so people will discover what you can do with plain HTML and CSS. Uh, people will start shipping. This is really, really fun. Native popover, scroll based animations, etc. That's that, that I think is true. There's more coming to HTML and CSS. There's a lot that's already there that I don't know about that. You probably don't know about that. We see people like Jay show us that we, like we had no idea CSS could do. So I think that is almost definitely absolutely true. All right, let's find some more. 2024 would be the year of React on the server. Hope you get the joke. I actually don't get the joke because I think that is like true. I don't know. I don't know what that means. Someone said, I imagine v0.dev will start popping up and being used in the front end world. This is an AI generator tool from Vercel. I've heard such good things about this, but every time I've tried it, it just crashes basically. So I don't really know like why it doesn't work for me. The tool I think is awesome, but unfortunately like hasn't really worked for me. So I don't know. Uh, PHP will grow. I, yeah, maybe so. Uh, my prediction, Twitter boy is going to be mad writing CSS, not the way they do. I don't even know what that means. Wes, that like doesn't read. That doesn't read very well to me. I don't know what that means. HTML custom elements will take off. Web components, the good parts. I feel like I've heard about web components for years now. And people are really excited about it, but I, I still don't feel like it's become, I don't feel like it's grown kind of the way that we expected it to. So I don't, I don't really know how to take that. We'll see. So another mention for bun here won't take over node, but we'll push node and Dino and other tooling forward. I agree with that. I did that video where I was excited about uh, bun. I, for me, it's like so much easier to work with and setting up node, especially with TypeScript and some of the other things that come with it. So I wouldn't be surprised about that at all. Someone mentioned Svelte 5 will be finished and released. Let me know how many of you are using Svelte. That is like by far one of my uh, favorite frameworks. So I that getting finished with version 5, I would I would think is, is a given. Yeah. Another shout out for LLMs and generating UIs on the fly. I think LLMs building anything is going to continue to grow, whether it's designs or actually writing code for you or I don't know, like anything that it can do, I imagine it will continue to do and do it better and better than it ever has. All right, here's the one. There's a bunch of different comments in here. Here's the one I'm gonna leave you on. 90% of web development will use 10 year old technology. Everyone will rebuild their portfolio 15 times based on Vercel's latest tweets. This is like meant to be satirical, but also I feel like has a lot of truth to it. There's so much hype around these new frameworks, new tools and stuff on Twitter and on videos like I do. But the reality is most companies aren't using those latest tools. They're using stuff that's been around for 10 years uh, and, and more. So the fact that like 90% of web development will use older technologies, absolutely agree. That's how it's been for a long time, regardless of how it seems on Twitter. Everyone will rebuild their portfolio 15 times based on Vercel's latest tweets. I've, I've done this. I did like a WordPress site. I did Gatsby. I tried Next.js and then I just moved to Astro, which is where I am now. So I've done this like my fair share of times too. I think all... Many developers have rebuilt our personal sites and blogs many times, which is like, that's just, that's just what we do. We love to try stuff out. So anyway, those are a few different ideas, a couple of central themes in here, React server components, uh, AI slash LLM, bun growth and kind of replacing 
or kind of pushing and maybe potentially replacing replacing some of the Node.js audience. And then several people mentioned like the growth of, of PHP. So maybe there's a resurgence for PHP as well. But let me know what you think about those in the comments and also add anything that you think wasn't covered here that you expect in the rest of 2024. Let me know. If you're interested in more of the stuff that I'm working on through the rest of 2024, which I've got a few fun projects that I am, uh, you can sign up for my newsletter at jamesqquick.com. And then at the bottom of any page, or you can go to slash newsletter, you can sign up for the newsletter there. So I hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you're as excited about the ecosystem in the rest of 2024 as I am. I'll catch you next time.